and I invite uh, Dr. Shizuka Ko, who is no stranger to AIOS from Japan, uh, on a novel approach to di dry eye diagnosis. The Japanese ophthalmic the corneal society has their own way of grading uh, dry eye using uh, fluorescein patterns, and we look forward to hearing from them. Thank you for the kind of bit, uh, introduction, Dr. Maskati. Uh, hello, everybody. This is uh, Shizuka Ko from Osaka University, Japan. It is my great honor to be invited here to give a talk. Uh, my talk today is about the dry diagnosis. I'd like to introduce the uh, novel approach to diagnose, uh, diagnose with just a fluorescent. Okay, this is my financial disclosure. I believe uh, all of you are familiar with the uh, views uh, report. Uh, so first, it was pub uh, published in 2007, and later, um, the 10 years later, another version was published. Right now, uh, several uh, reports are actually published in, in progress. Uh, let me introduce the uh, Asia Dryer Society. It was founded in 2014, and Based on the changes in the understanding of the types, symptoms, and signs of dry eye, actually uh, ADES uh, proposed a new perspective about dry eye. So this is a, a timeline about the definition and diagnostic criteria for dry eye for both t and ADES. So uh, ADES uh, defines dry eye in the following way. Uh, the following. Dry eye is a multifactorial disease characterized by unstable tear film, causing a variety of symptoms or visual impairment, potentially accompanied by ocular surface damage. So this is a simple actually comparison um, about dry eye definition between DUS2 and the ADES. Actually, um, from the, according to the DUS2, dry eye is characterized by multiple potential pathogenesis. But the, for the ADES, it is very simple. It is characterized by unstable tear film. This is a, a pathological mechanism. Actually, uh, there are a lot of um, uh, a lot of risk factors for the um, causing the uh, causing underlying mechanism of uh, tear, dry eye. Static risk factors include abnormality in lipid, aqueous, and mucin components. For the dynamic risk factors, there are a lot of known dry eye related conditions. You know. So based on the abnormality in tail film or epithelial surface, ADES classified dry eye into three types. So in aqueous deficient dry eye, target component is aqueous tears. In the decreased visibility of dry eye, the target component is the mainly membrane associated mucin. And increased evaporation dry eye, target component is generally lip layer, mostly associated with mammalian gland dysfunction, MGD. Of course, there are mixed type, uh, type of dry eye may exist. So let me, uh, okay. So actually, uh, according to the ADES, dry eye can be uh, Diagnose with the combination of symptoms and unstable tear film. This is very simple. And it is highly dependent on tear film stability. But, cons so but, but actually, with a, just a simple tool of fluorescence, so we can diagnose dry eye. So let me revisit, revisit the uh, simple three steps in use of fluorescence. So please apply the minimal amount of fluorescein and shake well. Otherwise, uh, actually, extra, uh, tear, uh, extra actually fluid can uh, affect actually tear stability. And of course, please apply gently. 
So just the paper strip operation helps dry a diagnosis without any expensive special devices. So TFM oriented diagnosis, it is actually based on the fluorescent breakup pattern. We can um, classify dry eye into three types, aqueous deficient dry eye and decreased irritability on dry eye and increased evaporation dry eye. Let me explain with the movie. Okay, let's start with the aqueous deficient dry eye. So uh, this is the area break. So this is a, a severe aqueous deficient dry eye. Insufficient component is aqueous tears. So there is no upward movement of operation after the brink. So it is only limitedly observed within the lower part of the cornea. Usually you can see a lot of uh, corneal epithelial damage over the cornea. So this is a line break. So this is a mild to moderate aqueous deficient dry eye. Insufficient component is aqueous tears. So you can see the vertical line-like shape during upward movement of operation as the lower part of the cornea. Unlike the area break, it is actually right after the brink. There, there is not nothing, but you can see the vertical line break lower part of the cornea. So let's move on the decreased with the virility dry eye. Spot break. Now you can see a lot of uh, spot. Spot like shape immediately after the eye opening or when at least one spot break is not erased during upward movement fresher. It is very unique. So this is a, a severe decrease with the virility dry eye. Insufficient component is actually membrane-associated mucin. So this is a dimple break. You know dimple. <laughs> okay, so this is a, 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 this is a mild to moderate decrease with the ability dry eye. A insufficient component is membrane-associated mucin. So you can see the an irregular but vertical line-like shape during upward movement of fluoration within the central cornea. Unlike the spot pattern, right after the brink, there is no, no break up, but you can see the break uh, upward, during the upward movement. Let's move on, increase evaporation dry eye, random break. So this is the uh, uh, increased evaporation dry eye. The insufficient component is usually lipids uh, associated with MGD. An irregular indefinite shape occurs after the cessation of upward fluorescent movement. So the point is you can see the break up, break up right af after the, uh, all the movement actually finished. So of course you can see these random break uh, even in the normal eyes. So this is a summary of the TFOC, TFM oriented diagnosis. You can do that, just a paper strip operation. And let me uh, share with you quickly uh, about the TFM oriented therapy. So each layer of the ocular surface may be targeted by a selective topical uh, therapy to stabilize the TFM. So this is a strategy of uh, each pattern. So in aqueous deficient dry eye, we need the insufficient, uh, we need the aqueous tears. For the area break, it, we need a adequate aqueous supply like Pantoprax. And for the line break, we need a rehydration. For the uh, decreased vitability dry eye like spot, pot, spot break or dimple break, we need mucin supply. But for the increased vibration of dry eye, uh, we need uh, usually uh, MGD treatment. Again, fluorescent stain is powerful. So,
Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Dr. Sujuka, can you use distilled water instead of saline? Uh, why would you use saline instead of anything so, else? Uh, for use of fresher? Uh, we, we use a saline. saline. Distilled water instead, that has nothing in it, right? I mean, for fluorescent, uh, for fluorescent yeah. staining. Uh, actually, uh, some, some hospitals actually use a uh, uh, actually drop of fresia, but you, I, in my hospital, I usually use a paper strip, just a paper strip of fresia. You use paper strip, but mm -hmm. can you wet, wet. that paper uh, strip? Wet, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. yes. Just uh, usually, so I recommend the, put the cell two eye drops of serine, cell serine. Sorry. And actually, we make wake share because in my experience, just a one drop of uh, saline actually it is not sufficient. So two I, two I, two saline eye drops. Thank you, thank you. And uh, to, 